Welcome back. Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer will retire at the end of this term, which means President Biden gets his chance to appoint a Supreme Court justice. He has said he wants to see an African-American woman on the bench. Let's talk about it. Joining us again this week, distinguished lecturer at Georgetown Law and former president of Brandeis University, Frederick Lawrence. We are switching topics with you this week, sir. We talked about education earlier in the week, but clearly right. we knew at some point uh, this would happen. There was pressure on Justice Breyer to retire. Are you surprised it happened in the middle of the Supreme Court term? No. I think the assumption was it was going to happen this term, and they would give the uh, the, Senate, the president time to make an appointment, the Senate time to make a confirmation, all so that there'd be a justice ready to step in at the end of the term when Justice Breyer steps down. So whether it was this month, next month, this was likely to be the timing. One of uh, D.C.'s favorite games to play is, is guess the nominee, and there have been a lot of speculation. There has been a lot of speculation as to who it may be. President right. Biden had vowed to appoint a black woman uh, to the bench or at least advance the name. And there are two names uh, that are circulating right now, Ketanji Brown, uh, Brown Jackson, who was a judge on the D.C. Circuit Court, and California Supreme Court Justice Leandra Kruger. Uh, this is not one of those situations where we'll see a, a surprise here, I would assume. I don't think so. And I think the two names that you mentioned are the top two names that everybody has been talking about. Judge Jackson was appointed to the district court, federal district court here in D.C. by President Obama. And then President Biden elevated her to the D.C. circuit. She clerked for Justice Breyer. So there's a nice connection there as well. Uh, she was the vice chair of the Sentencing Commission, uh, has an excellent pedigree, Harvard College, Harvard Law School, uh, and at 51 years old also meets another requirement for this president, I assume, <laughs> he wants a younger judge. Yeah, and especially, too, considering the fact that she was confirmed by the same Senate over the summer for her current post. She got 53 votes there, which clearly would be enough for, for confirmation. We go back to that vow that the president made, that he wanted to appoint a black woman to the Supreme Court. And there have been many on cable news tonight who have said this is a matter of identity politics and nothing more. I think back to 1980. Well, I, I, was, I was very young in 1980, but I know in 1980, uh, then-President Reagan, actually on the campaign trail, had vowed to appoint a woman to the Supreme Court. There had been none at that point. Um, when you look at these nominees out there, this is still a matter of finding somebody who is intensely qualified for this position. Absolutely. And I think the names that you've heard, Judge Jackson, we talked about uh, Justice Kruger from the uh, California Supreme Court, uh, the other names that have been mentioned, uh, these are all highly qualified people. So the, the, there's no question about that. The, the other issue that I would raise is that you're going to hear some talk during the confirmation hearing, whoever it is, is this somebody who's too radical? Mm -hmm. Be rest assured, all the names that I've heard, especially the two that we've been talking about, are not nearly as far to the left as at least three of the justices on the current court are to the right. So if there's a radical on the court, it would be Justice Thomas, Justice Alito, Justice Gorsuch to the right, much, much more than a Justice Jackson or a Justice Kruger would be to the left. But regardless, a lot of people are expecting some sort of, uh, there will be a fight for this in the days of confirming a Supreme Court justice like Justice Breyer was with, I think, 89 votes uh, back during the Clinton era. Those, those, those years are done. And interestingly, not just Justice Breyer, Justice Ginsburg, but also Justices Scalia and Kennedy. So both conservative and liberal justices used to get 90, 95, mm -hmm. 98 positive votes in the Senate. No, those days seem like a long time ago now. More interestingly enough, too, this is uh, the second of Bill Clinton's two appointments that will be leaving the bench, uh, the first being uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Hey, we always appreciate your perspective. Thank you very much, Frederick Lawrence. Good being with you.